Okay, I think we're going here. So, let us talk about clear cut. Get a sip of water first. So, um, I will not be talking about the strategy behind clear cut because cough strategy is kind of all the same. And I've already covered that in a different review where I talk specifically about like just how to play Koth. Um, so if you haven't watched that, then go ahead and watch that first. I'm just going to talk about clear cut and its peculiarities and how you apply the strategy to the map specifically. So with that being said, let's start with the rollout. Um, as with all Koth, uh, you do a double roamer rollout meaning your pocket soldier doesn't do the static jumps and spawn and then have the stick out or whatever and get a crit heal buff at the end. Uh, you will just buff your demo, have your demo jump, and then buff both soldiers who will then both roll out as if they were uh, just doing a roamer rollout. And the way the team usually rolls out is, I think, uh, through main, actually. It could be right side. I've literally only rolled out on this map on demo. Uh, main, and you could go up valley i think it's just main through saw actually actually you know what you are i'm now being reminded that uh, i should talk about call outs first and foremost uh so of course you have the spawn very rare that you ever get spawn camped on this map it's a very large map so there's not like a ton of very specific call outs but you have like left side main right side um there could be a little hiding spot here there's a lot of like little hiding spots even wall bugs as well uh, that I suppose you have to look out for if a... Oh, I felt like I was, like, standing on something there. Uh, that you have to look out for if, like, a soldier's unaccounted for after you get pushed out. What have you. But uh, this is Valley. Um, and... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have Valley. Uh, this could also get called Main. Uh, you notice I was just calling it Saw. That is also Main. But, of course, like, contextually... It's going to make sense when one or the other is using it. And then uh, I like to call this area Bats. I know it has some type of name. And I like calling this Window. Um, it might also have a different name. But uh, when someone's calling Window, it's pretty clear what uh, is being talked about. And then this little area is called Killbox. And uh, I guess you have the tower. You have the shed. Uh, inside the shed. And then back door as well. And then, like, on top of shed. As for the point, it's the point. Um, what else? This is, like, kind of a callout, I guess, because it's somewhere that people will play spam early into a round. Same with this. This is actually quite a nice uh, spam angle for a soldier early into a round. Um, and I guess this area could be called catwalk or something. But usually I'm just, like, if I'm playing the map... Well, I'm not really, like, calling out if their flank's there, because they're just kind of expected to be there. But, uh, and you just use, like, far right or something. I don't know. Um, and then you could talk about the box, because it's something that will get trapped. Uh, as for that, I don't know what other specific callouts there are. So, oh, I have a fool in my chat again, and I have Sammy Miami, the winner of Intermediate. Hello, guys. So... I think that's pretty much it for the callouts. Um, so we'll return to the rollouts. I'm pretty sure the combo will just roll out through main, through saw. Usually, I suppose you can go right side up valley uh, as well, or maybe even main to valley. That all works. Oh, there was a callout I missed, actually. Um, yeah, this area between tower, like this kind of low ground, um, I like to call it trench which is an important call out as opposed to what I was calling catwalk because uh, a player might be like very aggressive here in trench and uh, someone could just go kill them, you know? So combo's going to roll out through either right side to valley or main through saw. As for the demo, it's going to be a pretty high sticky because you're trying to land that ramp slide and usually walk up valley. Uh, I think you can alternatively um, roll out through kill box as well. This is something that I didn't really do much. Maybe I'll even hit a ramp slide there. 
You could probably hit a pogo and some type of ramp slide to be faster here. Does not matter that much. You're just coming out of a different side. You're still going to the same place. And the uh, the right side rollout is very forgiving as well because uh, you know you have a full buff if you like beef and have to use another sticky. You can just grab this pack, which you might want to take anyway for the extra like sticky ammo anyway. Uh, so it's really not a big deal. But uh, yeah, uh, as far as the soldier rollouts, that I'm a little shaky on. I'm sure a pocket could be doing a nice little ramp slide here to get to right side and a roamer doing something to get left side. Uh, maybe even like jumping up to bats out window onto that fence I'm talking about or was talking about earlier. Um, yeah, you'd have to look at a uh, soldier specific thing there just because I don't have expertise in that. Um, yeah, so with that in mind, let's talk about positioning uh, on like a mid fight and just positioning in general. So uh, as a combo member, so demo, this is kind of just where you like to be in front of point. You can just see everything. You can shoot at everything. You can shoot at their roof. You can shoot at point. You can shoot behind the point. If your house gets shoved, you can, or your roof, you can spam that out. Uh, you just kind of see everything and can shoot at everything. So you notice like I'm jumping around in like a wide area because you have a lot of room to work with. Um, so like when your team's aggressing, you can be aggressing across point. Um, and when you need to kite back to get healed, you can kite back to the right side or in some cases even left side. As long as you're like out of those spam lanes, you might be able to get bowed. But uh, yeah, you just have this whole region to work with. And then if you need ammo as well, you might be able to duck in here. Uh, one thing to look out for though, and this applies more to the higher levels, but uh, on any class, if you're grabbing that ammo, be careful about when you come back out because I, as a demo, the second I see someone go for that ammo, you know I'm like sinking that for when they, I expect them to come back out. So you might want to just like stutter for a little bit and wait. Um, that's like highly specific. I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, demo, you're just going to be like lurking in this kind of region um, where you can just see everything and damage everything. As a medic, uh, similar positioning. You want to be able to heal your demo. You want to be able to heal people on your roof. Uh, so this is a nice spot and as a med you want to duck more uh, behind shed to, to kite spam and as far as like leaving goes um, usually saw or valley saw is like a, a, a good place to be leaving um, as for pocket scout so you can be on the point on like any local high ground like the box etc um, and if you can, you want to be on roof as well, because this is fantastic high ground that uh, you can just deny any bomb and do a lot of things at. This is a position where you're likely to be eating some spam. So, uh, you know, don't expect to be able to be up here the whole time if the other team's demo is doing their job. But it can be a nice position. And early into a round as well, up here can be nice. Just get some, like, pistol spam, and you can just really see everything to anticipate bombs and, like, help deny any early bombs that they're they're going for onto your medic okay now pocket soldier um likewise as a pocket soldier it's very nice to be up on this roof you can just spam everything um and again not a position that you're likely to be able to linger in but uh a nice or fantastic position nonetheless uh you can play a little bit in-house sometimes um and just be like kind of the 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 troll under the bridge um i wouldn't recommend that like too much because soldier bombs on this map are very good um because there's a lot of good high grounds and actually let me just go to uh soldier for this so my jumps are really bad and i haven't practiced any of these but, um, you can see how bad they are. <laughs> um, nevertheless, you have a lot of really nice high walls that you can bomb off of, um, just everywhere. So you can do some really good stuff. Um, and it, it's really easy to get behind on this map. Um, so easy that I can do it. So you can get behind right side like that as a roamer. You can get behind on the other side. Um, off of this wall. 
So it's it's very easy to get behind and there's usually a pack waiting for you. So that's like a big meta of this map, I suppose, is getting soldiers behind. Well, also, usually you don't want to commit both soldiers behind simultaneously. But uh, getting a soldier behind and then having that soldier either draw enough players behind that you can just take a fight in front across point while like so let's say they send two back to uh to 2v1 that guy suddenly the front lines is going to be a 5v4 and yeah you might want to just aggress and then take that fight while the soldier behind is distracting or if they only send like one guy behind then uh i mean the soldier could straight up 1v1 them if they wanted or they could just like bide their time and then with aggression in front recollapse from behind with a bomb uh there's just a lot of options that you can do and it all starts with uh, getting that guy behind so yeah definitely recommend as a soldier bombing behind can be nice and also these are just nice high bombs you know you don't have to be oh i keep failing this hopefully you have uh, more experience than i do in this but uh, you can totally be committing onto players with those nice high bombs so definitely as a soldier on this map or as a pocket specifically recommend not just like waddling on the floor and playing ammo mod um i think you're going to be much more effective going for some nice bombs and being a very dynamic player so that is kind of the pocket soldier positioning you're going to be playing largely right side um you do have to worry about the flank shoving your roof you don't want to be dying when they do that you probably just want to be jumping away uh also like how on product, for instance, um, as a soldier you want to be playing, or as a pocket you want to be playing right side, like kind of by pride, or not right side, cliff side rather, uh, and like playing towards pride, and then sustaining yourself off the cliff side pack. Likewise, as a pocket, you want to be sustaining yourself off this pack and trying to avoid taking unnecessary heals. Um, so yeah, that's pocket, and now let's talk about roamer. So roamer, you're going to be on the left side. Um, and from here, yeah, you can play all sorts of spam. I don't know if there's a good spam. This is, like, very close. You're probably going to eat a lot of damage. But, uh, this I mentioned was a nice spam lane early into a round. Get some good damage on the demo. Um, and, as I mentioned, you have to worry about, uh, the house being shoved. On the flip side, you and your flank scout can absolutely shove this roof. As a scout, you can double jump from that lip onto the roof. So combined with a bomb, you can absolutely shove this roof, potentially get picks. And a nice thing as well about uh, being on this roof is typically um, if you're like eating a ton of spam, um, I suppose you can just like jump away immediately. And this is a pack you will be sustaining yourself off of. Um, but you can also just like drop down. And a lot of the time they have to like commit a lot to get to you um because they'd have to start crossing point and be like halfway across i suppose well the flank is going to be so far away that they're unlikely to be able to hit you very effectively so it uh yeah uh roof shoves can be nice um something that you don't always have to die for as well just because you can you can always jump away okay um what else? Yeah, again, going behind as a roamer is nice. And when you do a roof shove, like, you can totally have one soldier uh, actually commit for it. And then the other, like, fades or something. Um, if you wanted. Uh, that's not... That is a very committal bomb. That was not a fade. But, uh, yeah. You definitely want to exploit the other team's roof um, in general. It's, it's a good strategy. Um, now we will move on to Flank Scout, which is the last of the classes. And just like on any cough, um, Flank Scout does watch the flank and help out the roamer, but they also do like to play with beam and uh, and just do a lot of different things, basically. It's a very like opportunist type of class. So you can totally play with beam on point, and do things across point, chase picks, etc. You can totally just play left side, shove roof, etc. There's actually a, a very successful scout that ran full-time shortstop on this map. 
and their entire plan was just like play on height and just shoot mid-range like 60 damage shots with the shortstop and they would rack up like 350 damage a minute and soldiers just couldn't bomb um i wouldn't necessarily recommend that as a strategy but uh just i don't know a little anecdote uh but yeah definitely just play opportunistically play with your team um don't just solo feed make sure that when you're aggressing that is a situation where it makes sense to based on what your team is doing and yeah i don't have like very specific notes but you notice um everywhere that i'm like jumping around here is just high ground and again the pocket scout as well can just double jump between these um so it's very easy as a pocket scout to get to roof um yeah, high ground on scout is like critically important and something that uh, they really don't. Newer scouts just forget to stand on high ground. If you're a scout and you're trying to play flank scout down here, you're just going to die um, anytime anyone takes a fight with you. Versus like on this height, if you are double jumping out here, when you're over trench, anyone shooting at you with projectiles has to hit a direct to get literally any damage on you. Uh, versus on the floor, they can just splash you to hell. So playing high ground as a scout is quite important. Uh, definitely something to just do all the time. Okay. So that is kind of the basic positioning for all the classes, given like an even ubers fight roughly. Um, now let's get back on demo and... We'll talk about some specific situations. Actually, you know what? Um, we can talk about off classes. Because this is a map where you can sometimes see off classes. Um, so, first and foremost is Sniper. Sniper is an off class that can get played pretty much full time on product. On clear cut, you sometimes see teams play sniper, and it's not very good. Um, and I will explain why. I will explain how to counter the sniper. Um, but first, some basic peaks like window is just kind of like where you would expect a sniper to want to be. But you can't really see point that well, or their combo. You can shoot their roof. You can shoot their flank. Um, that's about it. Uh, the big one is gonna be main. Where now, yeah, you get to see the point. You're going to get to see their combo, wherever they may be. Uh, this little fence, actually, is a nice way to spot if they have that sniper. Because, you know, I am unsnipable right now, and I could see if there's a sniper in Saw. Um, but yeah, this is like the big sight line you don't have to worry about, or just like almost a few steps back from where their demo would be. Um, so, the reason sniper is not so good on this map is the simple reason that it is so easy to get a soldier behind that if that sniper was playing window, they're dead. If that sniper was playing in saw, they're dead. Um, it's just so easy to get a soldier behind to kill that sniper. And that's usually what teams will do. Um, and then, if they have that sniper and they're like playing a person to protect them, um, it's not like product where if you have just a scout or someone protecting the sniper, like that player is still ready to like drop down from China and start fighting players on point if need. No, they are very, very, very much separated. If you just have a scout in saw, they are doing nothing except pressuring or helping that sniper. Uh, same applies to like on bats by window. Um, yeah. So they are basically going down a player just to keep the sniper protected, in which case point should be very contestable. Um, so yeah, basic um, counter or basic sniper um, counterplay is just use one of these uh, really good high bombs to get a soldier behind to, to go kill them and then you can just take your fight even if it's a soldier for sniper trade then a lot of the time you can just be happy with that okay now with that out of the way uh, what other off classes so actually uh, an old team of mine did play engineer on this map which I think is okay. Um, you can actually get like a telly there, which can be a little convenient. Um, and a level three gun here can actually be pretty powerful just for 
sheer virtue of the fact that the other team can't really bomb into you. Uh, and that means that on disad, instead of having to play to leave saw, which to be clear is where you would be playing to leave on disad, uh, you can actually like disrespect the uber a lot and get a lot better spam and do a much better point or much better job of contesting the point even when they have uber and you don't because you can always just kite back and they have to waste time on the gun um it just buys you time to kite um that being said i don't think engineer is really good on this map because it that only works if it's a level three gun and it takes so long to get the level three gun up that you're effectively 5v6 for so long plus the engineer can't do anything to pressure the point so if you don't have the point then it's kind of pointless uh, you see mini engineer sometimes. Um, that I also think is not very good. Uh, it's literally just a matter of people identifying where the gun is at, letting your demo know, and then your demo just uses one projectile to kill it. Um, so yeah, I figured I'd mention it because I see engineer on this map sometimes, but I do not think it's very good. Um, probably not something um, that you can expect to work, but uh, maybe people don't know the counterplay. So, that being said, last, well, we'll do off-classes even are there. Pyro, bad, don't use it. Um, now, Heavy is actually pretty strong on this map um, in a very specific situation. So, if someone dies while you have the point, let's say, you know, the, let's say they shoved your house or your roof and... Uh, they killed your pocket soldier, but the scout that killed your soldier died, so it's a trade. Um, not something you're going to be... You're going to be able to hold the point, hopefully. Um, so, not a big deal, just a trade. Now, that soldier, since you have the point, might be inclined to come up heavy and then play in shed. And that is, like, a really powerful tool to deny cat pressure. So, heavy can actually be very strong when played inside of shed. Um, in order to hold the point for longer. I definitely don't recommend Tomislav for this. Um, I know it's like a, a meme uh, about me that like, uh, he hates the Tomislav, whatever. Um, unironically, like the damage resistance of Brass Beast like makes such a difference in a situation like that. Plus the damage, like this is absolutely a mid-range um, type of deal. Even if you think like the Tomislav spread is like much better for long range, I doubt that'll be like applying um and yeah you just want to like do your damage if you take too much damage you can duck out get bowed the whole time because keep in mind your medic is always going to be like in sight line of you pretty much to be able to bow you so heavy on this point can be very powerful uh if done correctly and just waste a lot of time when you have the point point. and then the last thing is spy uh, not something you really ever see but i think uh Spy absolutely could work in a very specific situation as well, where if you know your team wants to four man, um, but you got like a way earlier spawn timer than them. So let's say uh, same situation, soldier gets traded out, but this time around, like they have a second left before they spawn. As they're spawning, your medic gets forced and you like lose two players as well. So you know you have to leave, you know it's going to be disad, and you know you're going to want a four-man next. You could take that early time that you spawn so much sooner than everyone else to roll out on spy and get in position for the four-man, uh, because they're not going to really expect the spy timing there. It might make the four-man more successful. But that's like so rare. I don't know if I've ever seen that come up other than like once or twice. Um, but it's something to keep in mind in case uh, you might just be able to get a better four-man off. Um, okay, so that's kind of all the classes covered, um, now, let's talk about, let's talk about, like, mid-fight strategies, or just what you want to do to, to make stuff happen. So I already talked about bombing soldiers behind, uh, that can be very powerful, just having, um, not only the distraction, so you could draw multiple players back which uh, is very beneficial because then on the front lines you get to aggress and they're down a player in that fight and that's a fight that on paper you should be able to win as a result um, 
it's very easy as a or as a team to have the only plan B just get a soldier behind and then they counter that and your soldier keeps dying in which case uh, probably not something you want to just continue doing you probably want to adjust but uh, yeah soldier behind to either waste time and draw people back or when you're behind you know maybe you get your pack or something um, and then call a time to recommit and suddenly you are now bombing from behind as your team is crossing point for a big collapse. Uh, so stuff like that can be quite nice, as well as just like high bombs in general um, are very powerful on this map, just because of how many like high walls there are for you to wall shot off of uh, during a bomb. So a lot of what happens on this map is started by like soldier engagement. So it's definitely important to have soldiers <clears throat> that have uh, good jumps and uh, good timings, aren't feeders, are able to, <clears throat> you know, do what they need to to help the team out. Um, so yeah, soldier commits with aggression across point can be nice. Soldier bombs behind can be nice. Um, outside of that, you could try roof control. So as a demo, if I'm... Like, the, the order of uh, importance, I'd say, of who to shoot at. So low on the list is, like, players that are pretty passive. Players that could react to the projectiles I'm firing and get out of the way. Uh, next to that is probably players on high ground. So that's an important thing to shoot at. Um... And something I probably will shoot at. And about equal to that is like players trying to ca like cap the point. Uh, those are definitely priority targets. Just deny cap time. Um, then like players that are maybe starting to cross point. Um, and players that are on your own roof are like critically important. The only thing that's more important than that is like players that have cross point and are now in your face. Um, so pretty much whenever someone is on your roof as a demo, you should be like directing your attention towards that so because of that if for instance your team combined with you know demo spam on on roof maybe you have a soldier fade bomb maybe it's just your flank committing to the roof if i hit like a sticky or two on those players they should totally be weak enough to shove and you shove that roof in combination with pressure cross point now this demo that really 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 wants to be shooting at this is now confronted with the fact that he's shooting at this as point is being crossed and he's being shot at by the entire combo might just like straight up die um so a roof shove to divide a demo's attention and combine that with pressure across point can be very powerful and something to um just get your foot in the door so a lot of these plans are plans to just kind of make things happen which is more of an asset when you don't have control of the point and you need to get control of the point. Because if you do have control of the point, then you should be happy to just, like, stop their efforts. Of course, there is something to be said about uh, if you are constantly giving them problems to deal with, then it's... Uh, that, that also serves the added effect of making it less likely that they're going to, like, have a good pressure and a good... Uh, point pressure and cap but as long as you can like stop their efforts that's usually good enough maybe like the occasional roof shove but uh, when you have control of the point like bombing soldiers behind might just be very risky because uh you don't want your soldiers dying in times like that because not only you have control of the point they're going to have long spawn times but uh you don't need to make too much craziness happen you really just need to play good spam on point that's largely what's going to be uh you know getting those uh or just wasting time and stopping their efforts. Of course, like, stopping their roof shoves and stopping their soldiers behind, etc. Um, yeah, so, what else? Um, so as far as when players get behind, uh, if they, like, bomb the soldier behind, you could totally just go fight them. Cut them off at, like, the big way to stop it is um, cut them off at the pack. Like, if they are denied the pack, then they're just going to be weaker, and you're likely to, like, win a 1v1. But uh, you can totally send, like, a flank behind to go clean a guy up really quick. Um, 
And as long as you do that fast enough, then those players can be back in to fight, hopefully, before they do any aggression uh, on the front lines. So that's kind of the main way to approach that. Um, just making sure I have all my bases covered before I move on. Um, yeah, let's talk about exchanges now. So, as usual, um, this is, well, usually in Koth, um, you like to get Ubers out of the way before you commit to pressuring the point because <clears throat> at all, like, when all the point pressure um, reaches a point, reaches a head, man, I need to... <laughs> just reusing words um basically when it starts like boiling over and you're about to get the point if they have that uber then they can always just use it to buy themselves time buy themselves breathing room and like kind of reset the situation and like squander your advantage that you were going to convert into the point capture so if you get that uber out of the way first then they no longer have that trump card to uh to stop your efforts so places that people will like to exchange you can't just exchange a cross point that's fine. Um, kind of just default. It's whatever. It's not very good. Uh, well, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just an option. Um, totally, totally viable. Another option is uh, this is oftentimes like in a walk up. So let's say you like lost two players. Say you lost three players, but your med lived. Your med has Uber. Everyone gets out, and you're just refighting with spawners. Then you might want to walk Valley through Shed, and then pop around this corner. And what that does is not only are you a little more concealed, harder to like spot you coming, um, but you're also like a little bit deep when you do it because you're expecting like a demo to maybe be there, maybe a little step back, but still, um, they're right there. Another option is trench if you wanted to rotate over. The benefit of this is you are very deep when you use, um, so you're just extremely close. The downside is this is like very spammable especially from like roof or something uh and it's also a kind of a way it's like a ways out of the way where like your combo wants to be standing here kind of and you'd have to run all the way over you're very much telegraphing what you're doing so that's totally an option and you will be like very deep already when you use but uh i think just defaulting to shed or across point uh is usually a good way to go um and yeah, this is a very big map and a big point. So it can be hard to get the counter pop in. Um, if your pocket scout's hitting their shots, then it should be pretty straightforward. But there might be times where you need to bring in an explosive on the Uber that can be your demo or it can be your soldier. Um, the benefit of a demo in a situation like that is, I suppose, that a demo not only can deal more damage, but can deal like burstier damage that's harder to anticipate when it's incoming. So you might be able to catch more people off guard or like get more, um, not drops on the medic, but maybe like he drops a demo because he didn't expect like the pipe and sticky damage to just nuke him for like 200 in an instant. Um, or like kill a scout or something. Uh, you have more opportunity for that, but demo is much harder to get out on because you shoot a sticky to jump. It doesn't, it doesn't arm for like a long time. And in that time, it can get knocked away to where it lands over there and suddenly like you're stuck in. So it's very risky to uh, take that exchange with a demo uh, for that reason exactly pretty much plus demo is just a valuable class which just compounds with the fact that uh it's hard to get out makes it just even riskier um a soldier is very nice because a soldier can just jump out at a moment's notice whenever they like um but the damage is more predictable you're less likely to get like some random pick but uh, oftentimes that's gonna be fine just because uh <clears throat> you're really only just looking for that uh, counter pop um you know, you don't always have to be gambling for, like, picks and stuff like that. Which, to be clear, will still happen sometimes, uh, depending on your scouts damage as well. So, yeah, that's only something you have to really consider if uh, you are consistently not getting that uh, counter pop. But, uh, yeah, if you if you are, then just solo scout is, is the best option. 
Okay, and as far as like exchange meta goes, um, of course you don't want to be, so let's say like, um, if they're like really far back, then by all means you just pressure the point and cap the point. It, it doesn't matter if they have Uber, um, because you're not going to get anything out of just super, super, super chasing for an exchange. Um, that's unlikely to be the case, but I figured I'd mention it anyway. Okay, exchange is out of the way. Let's talk about um, let's talk about disad. So on disad, um, you pretty much want your combo ready to leave. Saw is usually the go-to. Um, Valley could work, but uh, Saw actually gives you more vision, and you can kind of still heal some players. So. If as a medic, you want to be safe. If your demo is forward and you can't heal them, don't commit forward to heal them because now you're caught and you don't want to be caught. So absolutely, you can play back saw. And if a player wants to get healed, they can back up to you. Um, you just don't want to be caught to their uber and just ready to leave out saw at a moment's notice. Um, as far as everyone else, I mean, it really depends on you know what you're trying to accomplish. Um, keep in mind, of course, on Koth, if they have ad but don't have Uber, you don't have to respect the ad up until they do get Uber. So if they have 40 ad, but you're at, let's say, 10%, then you know they won't get Uber for a little bit. And as long as your med is on top of tracking that Uber, they can totally play forward and play the point and play it as if both teams were even Ubers. And then only when your med is getting to, let's say, you know, 45, 50%, at which point you'd expect them to have like 80 or 90, you really just get back to where the position is and then play from there. If you want a four man uh, from there, that probably makes the most sense just because uh, like what else are you gonna do? Um, but yeah, it, it's all about your meds positioning um, and everyone else can, can kind of follow. Um, and yeah, like basic four man, kind of meta applies as well which we'll actually talk about in more depth um, when we talk about ad but um, in a nutshell if they are committed to holding the point or capping the point or whatever if their beam is committed then you definitely want to just send your four man if they are not committed to playing that objective then you can just continue to play the objective. So if you don't have the point, then you can cap the point. If you do have the point, then you're totally happy. You can just wait around, play spam continually until they eventually commit their heals, and then you you send your four man. Um, spam on this point can be very good. So there might be times where they have ad and you just play spam really well while your meta is safe, and things might even out, or you might uh, just stall them a little longer before you send it. Uh, it's all just good options can come from it. Um, yeah. So let's talk about ad. Uh, first and foremost, in those situations in which you have ad but don't have yet, um, absolutely be looking to take Ubers because Ubers are very good on this point. Uh, despite the fact that this is one of the bigger Koth maps, um, Ubers are still very good because it's one of the most chaseable Koth maps. As long as you have soldiers or a soldier that is ready to bomb um, they won't be involved in the uber as in they won't be getting flashed but let's say um, their medic is like here which is caught you should be bombing if they're here if they're like back here maybe not so much here definitely not uh, back here probably also not but yeah if they are like past this staircase then they're probably caught and you should just be bombing your demo in demo scout uber you might just be able to catch them straight up but when I say it's chaseable, I mean like their option of leaving Saw or leaving Valley or leaving Kill wherever they want to leave. Um, if you are high bombing a soldier, you can meet them in a tiny little doorway on the retreat. Um, so uh, chases with the Uber can be fantastic with just a soldier landing where they want to be exiting, even if the uh, the combo gets out. As long as you are adequately, you know, communicating where they're going. Like, if they're leaving Saw, then the soldier knows, okay, they're going to be leaving that door. Uh, Valley, they know. You know, stuff like that. 
So in those situations in which uh, you're about to be getting that Uber, um, there's going to be a lot of teams caught to Ubers that didn't expect to be caught. Um, what else? So let's say it isn't a situation like that. Let's say, um, let's say it was 50 ad, but you were at 70%. Um, they were at 20% and they were playing things as normal. You had control of the point. They tried to make a play for the point, but lost two. And then in the collapse, their med got caught as well. So a situation like that, um, those players aren't going to be doing anything until everyone's spawned. And they're out of the point, so they don't really... You wouldn't expect them to do anything other than just approach the point and four-man. Um, so, this this map actually has a very powerful anti-four-man strat. I'm just going to finish the water there. Um, called bunkering. And sometimes a shed actually gets called bunker um, as a result. So, bunkering is when you keep your heels inside shed. You have your demo trap off the entrance, however they like to trap it off. And then you have... A soldier watching back door. Could be pocket or roamer. Usually pocket, I believe. Um, and then usually just a scout with the medic as well in shed, just, just because you're pocket scout. Um, so, no one's going to get in back door past uh, a soldier. And no one's going to get in through the main door against a demo uh, who already has traps up. So, if they do four man then it's usually just they all die. Um, and likewise, you usually, excuse me, you usually keep your flank on top of the roof, who can then just help play this high ground and just completely annihilate these players that are that are sacking. So the bunker is just like the trump card against four manning on this map, meaning it is very important, and I mentioned this earlier, it's very important to play the, the four man metagame, where if you identify and this is why you don't just like blind rip a four man. You can absolutely approach. Um, you can bring your heels like up valley, make sure all these players are buffed, and then begin to back out if they're going for the four man. Um, but if you identify, so one big tag, if you can see any type of sticky in this doorway at all, which you can see from far away, that's a pretty good tell but also just identifying where the combo members are. Um, if you see beam anywhere outside of shed, then you can totally just rip your four man. Um, unless of course they're just like playing to leave, in which case you can play point. But um, if you don't notice that and you only see the bunker happening, then you totally just trap them off, spam off the high ground, make it so you focus these flank members and focus the point and they have two options. They can either rotate back around back door to try and play this uh, without using, in which case you could just four man, I guess, or they just pop out through um, through main or the main door of shed. Uh, both options you should be totally happy with. Um, so yeah, if you identify the bunker happening, absolutely play point, uh, try and kill their their flank members. Uh, sometimes actually a demo will trap off the main door but play outside of it, in which case they are a big target and you might want to focus them as well. Um, but yeah, definitely when you want to form in, um, it's very important to identify what type of situation you're looking at before you actually commit to that um, because you might be able to squeeze out more value. Yeah, um, on the flip side as well, if you are in the bunker and at any point if their beam is caught, then yeah, just bomb out from it uh, with an uber um, but if you notice they aren't four manning then you might want to pretty early uh, start to rotate over and you know play the point so that you can actually adequately heal these players and spam them out um, it will make you more vulnerable to that four man of course but uh, they weren't going to four man when you were in there anyway so it's it's fine um okay so we talked about four mans. What else? Um, should talk about the approach as well. Because the approach is really just valley sided, like 90% of the time. Um, 
There's kind of a reason why Killbox is called what it is, because it's just so tiny and so spammable that uh, you're going to eat a lot of damage getting through. Uh, whereas Valley is a much easier approach. Uh, of course, this is like the go-to trap, as well as like here. So you just have to clear like the normal stuff. And the other team will likely have players on here to spam you out. But uh, it's not too bad if you are, you know, spamming that out on the approach. Uh, I believe your pocket soldier as well can actually like high bomb off this wall um, to bomb these players off. So, yeah, you have options for the approach valley. It's usually the, the best door to approach because once you approach, you're just like right here and you're good to go. Um, what else? Talked about approaches. Man, there was something else for sure. What was it? Right. Um, so on the flip side, where if the other team is out, where do you position yourself? Well, pretty much just the other side of point. So as a demo, you might have plenty of time to get like really um, nice traps up, like something kill box. I suppose that could be set better. But uh, there's all sorts of traps that you can lay um, wherever you like. Actually, one that I like, if you have like a surplus of time, you can actually trap that and watch it from backdoor, which uh, you're still somewhat safe to leave as long as like the other stuff is still getting adequately spotted, but uh, their spawners might be just rolling out and just walking up and then you kill them. Um, yeah, you want to be like positioned here once you get your traps up and just ready to spot them, ready to spam the approach. And that's all this positioning serves to do is just spam their approach. And you definitely want to have probably your flank since it's left-sided, uh, on their roof, ready to spam their approach as well. Uh, likewise, just players on height, ready to, to shoot at things is important. So that's where you want to position yourself uh, once the other team is forced out, just so that you get to spam them when they approach. And then once they're getting that space, you just give it up, and then you can resume playing the point as normal, or do whatever plan you wanted to do based on like the state of Ubers, etc. Um, this map does have a forward hold. Not a forward hold you go for very often, at least not often compared to Product and Bagel. Those maps you forward hold a lot more frequently on just because they're smaller maps, it's easier to get into a forward hold, whereas Clearcut is a very big map, so um, you need a very decisive win on a fight to be able to forward hold, which doesn't happen too often. But when it does, um, usually, so your demo definitely wants to have traps right side and probably traps main as well. This is how I do it. Again, forward holds don't happen too often, so I honestly don't pay too much attention to them. But as a demo, you can position yourself on bats just to be like extra locking down right side. Uh, I do like to be positioning myself main. Um, or saw, I suppose, because this is where like my combo is positioned and I just like to be with my combo. So of course, right side is kind of like your main priority, but uh, yeah, you're, you're still in front of main, I guess. And then uh, you can have, I guess you could even have like a soldier on the boxes, a soldier here, just soldiers ready to spam out both main and left side. Um, it's a similar principle to it's actually a very similar principle to, to product, where if this was cliff, this was main, and then this was grass, you have the double soldiers ready to hold grass, but also spam out main, and then the demo primarily focusing on cliff, but can also trap out main. Um, yeah, and then flank scout, I think, is usually on bats. Um, at least that's, that's how I think it typically is. In any case, pocket scout and medic in saw. And this is purely a matter of wasting time. Um, if you can get picks, that's fantastic, but you're really just looking to stall them as long as possible. Um, as far as playing against the forward hold goes, and we'll go to our side of the map for that since it's fast. Um, you can first and foremost identify if it's a forward hold through this one-way window um, that they cannot see into. So I guess, uh, I mean, a flank member would be left side when rolling out, so 
pocket scouter or roamer if you see like the combo anywhere forward you can absolutely call out that they're forward holding so people don't just barrel through the doorway and die um as far as breaking it honestly i don't even know like the best way to approach that uh it might be getting a player through left you might be able to scatter traps or something um yeah i honestly could not tell you the best way to break it because a lot of the time it just seems like it kind of breaks itself i don't <laughs> i'll be honest i don't know i think left is probably the best way to get through um yeah i don't know it's not like a super forward hold like it would be on like a bagel or a product where you can waste a ton of time it's not uh, terrible to get through on uh, I'm sorry, that's not like a productive answer, and some of you might actually just get like super camped by a forward hold, in which case, uh, my bad. Um, yeah, what else is there? On clear cut, I feel like we covered our bases with just positioning and things like that. Um, there are a lot of specifics to the map, like specific cases, like the four man versus bunkering versus etc., getting soldiers behind, all that. But uh, the name of the game really is just solid spam on point. Um, and it really does center around point pressure and eking out as much point pressure as you can in those windows that you can. This isn't a, a point like Bagel that will flip, that you can just like do a lot of damage to a demo and then just flip the point based on his rehealing cycle. Um, this is very much a point that you need like sustained pressure on and like a, a solid uh, game plan and a solid spam plan. So that's absolutely what you should be focusing your efforts on. Getting soldiers behind, shoving their roof, stuff like that is all fantastic plans that uh, are good accessories to that. But uh, don't forget that it's about the point at the end of the day. So yeah, that is clear cut.